Time now for our Wall Street Week daily segment. The host of Wall Street Week, David Weston, joining us now as he does every day at this time. And David, we kind of almost through the end of earnings season. <laughs> and one thing we knew heading into this earnings season was every investor wanted to hear what these companies had to say about artificial intelligence. And you were right. We heard a lot about it. And it is your favorite subject, of course, Romaine, is artificial <laughs> intelligence. Yeah. There's a big announcement out of IBM today, actually. Okay. They're having their Think Conference. They're in the middle of that right now. And to bring us up to date, not just on Watson, but on Watson X, we welcome now Rob Thomas. He's IBM Chief Commercial Officer. So, Rob, thank you for being with us, coming out, I know, of the conference. So, Watson X, explain to us what it is and why it's going to make our lives better. David, look, something's happening in AI. Everybody knows it. Every CEO I talk to says we're excited, but we're unsure of what to do. We are really pleased to announce Watson X. It delivers what every company wants, trusted, scalable, adaptable, a system for building AI, working with what we call foundational models. This is going to have a huge impact for businesses. So it's very different, as I understand it, from getting a chat GPT to write a poem like Emily Dickinson. This is quite different from that. Explain what a company would do with this Watson X, what it gets from IBM, and then, again, what it builds on top of what it gets from Watson X. It is different because I don't think people want their customer support in the style of Shakespeare, as an example. <laughs> We're focused on business use cases like customer service, IT automation, cybersecurity. And Watson X gives you a capability for building models, for training models, for using open source models. We also have WatsonX.data, a way to bring data in that is trusted and understandable. And then lastly, we have WatsonX.governance, which is about AI fairness. Think of this as a nutrition label for your AI to make sure that what you're putting into work in your business is safe, reliable, and trusted. Uh, Rob, remain here. There's been, of course, a lot of talk, not only about the promise of this technology, but at least right now, the cost, the relatively high cost for the end user and how they use this here. When do we start to see a level of scale and more importantly, I guess, a level of adoption where maybe the cost becomes a little bit more manageable for the companies that do want to use these tools? Well, with Watson X, we've actually absorbed the cost. If you go back to 2020, we invested a lot of money to build the initial foundational models, and so clients no longer have to use that expense. The magic in AI comes with models, customer data, that's their proprietary data, and then domain knowledge or industry knowledge. So we bring a model that's already trained to do something. Customer just has to bring their data so they can get value much quicker because we've already absorbed the expense up front. How much discussion has been had about where that data is coming from? There's been a lot of concern uh, that certain companies aren't just going to be using their own internally produced data, but they're going to go out there into the world, into cyberspace or wherever, to scrape that data, data that in a lot of cases belongs to someone else. This is a really important principle for us. So we use data to train our models. That is IBM data. So it's our, our data. Customers bring their data to the platform. That is their data, that is their model. It cannot be used anywhere else, which is one reason that we're able to avoid this phenomenon known as hallucination, because we're training on very narrow use cases like how do you better support customers? How do you better run your IT system? So we avoid those risks, but it is a risk for every company, which is why you need a capability like WatsonX.governance, which ensures that you understand where the data came from, how it's being used, how it's making decisions, that is going to give CEOs the confidence to give foundation models and generative AI a try in their business. So, Rob, as a customer, it sounds good that you've invested all this money, but you expect to make some money off of it. How do you get paid? How does IBM make this into a real business? There's a couple different approaches. Watson X is a platform. Anybody can subscribe to the platform and start using it, so we'll earn money that way. We've also built a capability in IBM Consulting around a center of excellence for generative AI. So when clients start to work on this, they might need help with technology, with data. They might need to work through the change transformation of changing business processes in their organization. So we can monetize through software, the subscription to the platform, as well as consulting for clients that want a little extra assistance as they bring this into their company. Rob, you wouldn't have gotten this far, and if you hadn't talked to a few prospective customers, where are you on the rollout? When do you expect to actually see this in practice? What sort of appetite is there out there? Who are your first customers? We've been working with clients since January of this year. Many are using it. 
The big announcement we made last week was SAP, where SAP said they're going to adopt Watson as their embedded AI platform, and they're shipping product right now with it. So this is happening at the moment, and we'll continue from here. I think clients are still trying to figure out what is the first use case that I use. You take what we did with Watson originally around machine learning, deep learning. We have clients like Bredesco, who now automate 300,000 customer service calls a month at 95% accuracy. So machine learning was working. Foundational models is even better because you can get up and running faster. So this is happening right now. But what about for the world of finance, Rob? Is there a use case there specifically for Watson X and what, you're, and what you guys have de developed? We've decided to go after what I would call horizontal domains. IT automation, cybersecurity, automating human resources, automating finance, because this applies to every industry. And what we found is vertical use cases tend to not be as scalable, so they can become very complex and long-running projects. So we focused on domains that are relevant to every industry. Every employee has companies. Every employee has a CFO in an office of finance. Most companies have a supply chain. So we're thinking about these horizontal solutions that we know apply to every business. Rob, every powerful tool has the power to do great good, but also maybe some harm along the way, whether intentionally or otherwise. Are you anticipating in your business model the possible government regulation? We are working closely with Washington to evaluate what is the best way to regulate this, because I think the last thing anybody wants is unexpected consequences. The key point is, in this platform, we have designed in governance. So if you are using Watson X, the odds of something happening that you don't expect, I would say, are incredibly low. But we will continue to work with authorities and governments around the world to say, what is the right way to regulate AI? How do we prevent unexpected things from happening? I think it's a very important topic for all of us.